So now, here's another problem. We can do this vertically, okay? Same thing, if we apply the principles like I did for the addition problem, let's just do the exact same principle this way. The helpful thing about applying them vertically, um, that's one of the first things you learn how to subtract. Well, what's important about that is we can um, make sure that we have everything aligned, right? So remember, it's a subtraction problem if you just say it out loud when you do it. 4 minus a negative 1. So minus a negative 1 is a double negative, which is going to give you 5. And then 6i minus 2i is going to give you a positive 4i. Okay. okay? Got it? All right. Now, there's another way you could look at this. So this way helps, but a lot of students always forget to subtract. A lot of times, let's do... Um, you know, like here, let's do 4 minus 1 or 3 or something. Another way you can do this is just like I write 4 minus 3, I can write that as 4 plus a negative 3, right? Mm -hmm. So I can do the same thing with this problem. And a lot of students, I actually prefer doing it this way as well. I can write this as an addition problem. Mm -hmm. But if I write this addition problem, that means I need to negate all of my other terms. So therefore, now this becomes a negative negative 1 plus a negative 2i. Well, 4 plus 6i plus, now that becomes a positive 1 minus 2i. Right? All right? And then the cool thing about this is using our cumulative property of addition, I can just say, now you could do this vertically, but let's, let's show a different way to do this. You could do this vertically, or you could just use, um, uh, not the cumulative, but um, associated property and just associate it differently. So you could say 4 plus 1, and then, and then take your plus your positive 6i minus 2i, right? Because those are your like terms. Mm -hmm. So we can rearrange it to get 5 um, plus 4i. Right. And what you notice is, either way you do it, you get the exact same answer. Sweet.